let me introduce myself. So I'm Arnab, I'm a solutions architect, almost five years at AWS, and I work primarily with customers like yourselves that are building on AWS. Right now I'm focused with a bunch of .ai startups. Hopefully you'll be my customer one of these days, I'm excited. And with that, over to you, Jean. Uh, hey everyone, so my name is Jean Valat. I'm a, a Jerry VI specialist working here and helping startups innovate with Amazon Bedrock. Perfect. Next slide, please. Okay, um, I don't want to kill anybody with slides. So even though you, we have an agenda, I'm going to run right through it and get to the demo. We are really builders. We are not salespeople. We like to show and tell, and that's really the objective we have to talk about a cool new feature that Bedrock has launched. It's kind of in preview. Now, what is Bedrock? So Bedrock is our serverless platform for hosting large language models that you can consume with just an API call. You don't have to manage the infrastructure. You don't have to worry about which model. You just pick the API and you pay per use. So that's really what Bedrock in a nutshell is. And over time, listening to our customers like yourselves, we've added capabilities. And one of the capabilities that I'm excited to talk about today is Bedrock data automation. So we'll kind of talk about the pain point with unstructured data and then see how Bedrock data automation is solving it. And then I'll hand it over to Jean, who's made three, three demos for you guys. And we have only 20 minutes. So let's get excited, all right? <laughs> OK. Next slide. OK, so the multimodal context, right? So you know, everybody knows that there's a prolifer proliferation of data from everything is smart nowadays, from your watch to your refrigerator to an IoT sensor, to your car, everything is smart. So there is no end of data. And what we've seen with our customers, they say that they don't able to harness 80% of that data that they're collecting from us, from all these different gadgets. So, and one of the biggest challenge for that is because there's no constant tooling that you can use to extract information. They're in all proprietary formats. They have different schemas. So how do we solve this, right? So. I mean, folks that have used AWS probably know we've had some OCR kind of capabilities like text track. I call this text track, text track on steroids, you know? So, so that's what Bedrock Data Automation really solves, right? Um, yeah. All right. So Bedrock Data Automation is where text track kind of lets off. So what text track did was capture uh, insights from different documents and images and then really gives it to you in a JSON format or, an, or a, or a uh, fixed, fixed length string format, and then expects you to now build a full orchestration to a downstream system that can really leverage the insights. So we wanted to make that much more easier. So Bedrock Data Automation automates not only extracting insights from different multimodal constructs like images, videos, documents, and then also creates the workflow depending on your downstream system and integrates with that all over API. And you, know, you don't need to worry about which model to pick because we have figured out with all the work that we've done with our customers, what are the best models to choose based on the actual artifact that you're pointing Bedrock Data Automation to. Okay. So key features is that you know, everything is API driven at AWS. Folks that use AWS know this, but we also have a console for you to kind of get familiar with the UI and how to build this workflow out. So it's very intuitive. Uh, the underlying orchestration is completely automated for you. Uh, you pick your assets that you want Bedrock data automation to gather the insights, and then you push it out. A couple of additional things that we've added is you know, responsible AI and ethics and consideration, privacy. Uh, guardrails from you know uh, sensitive content that we don't want to expose, and so we have all of those prescriptive guidance already built in, and you have the option to configure that. You know, uh, finally, it's again a simple inference API that you call in your workflow, and it does the magic for you. Next slide. Okay. So how does it work? So really, there are two basic out, uh, output types, standard output 
And standard output is really for known documents like your bank invoice statement, your, your driver's license, a typical claims form, uh, a health ID card. So we've learned over the years what are those document types look like or what are those images look like, and we automatically spit out the insights that we get from those. So that's what we call standard output. We support different modalities, as you can see. Uh, it's documents, images, videos, and audio, right? So out of the box, you don't even have to configure anything, just point it to your data set and it will do it. But we know that most enterprises, they have a lot of proprietary content, proprietary documents, proprietary fields, and we need to be able to convey that to these models that are, that are supporting or powering Bedraw to understand those. And that's where custom output really comes in. So you, we call this a blueprint, but essentially it's basically a schema that talks about the type of asset it should look for and capture that and provide it in a format that is easily, uh, easily can be integrated to your downstream system. So like for example, if I had a claims automation going on and um, you, know, you, send in, you send in an images with your policy ID, Bedrock Data Automation can capture that information and catalog and create a case in your ServiceNow system, you know, it can do that. I think we can jump into the use cases, yeah. So these are the typical use cases that we see and it spans many, many verticals. I just talked to you about claim related to intelligent document processing. It applies to financials, it applies to insurance, it applies to HR, there's, just, there's so many different types. The next thing we see is media asset, um, is a lot of media companies like Fox and CBS, they have so much media that they have, and how can they understand, how can they group them together, bunch them together, and gather insights out of it? And finally, call, call center stuff like speech, speech analytics is a, is a, is a key, key I call it a horizontal because every industry wants to make sense of their, their support centers and how they're operating, and can they do the customer 360 across uh, sales, operations, and billing, right? So one of the, one of the quick uh, examples I'll give you is say, God forbid, I get into a car accident, right? I get out of my car, I take some pictures of the damages, you know, I upload it to my Geico insurance, I call the, I call the contact center and say, hey, I need this fixed ASAP, that's my only car, I gotta pick up my kids, and I do all this stuff in one shot through an app that Geico provides me, for example, right? What, what the back office can do is, different on the different modalities, the images that I uploaded of my car, the contact center conversation I had, and the back office policy that I am, I am subscribed to, it can collate all that information and make it very easy for the claim handler to process that claim. It may be even like in the, in the future with agentic world, maybe an agent will even approve that for me. So the possibilities are endless. You know? So I just wanted to kind of paint the art of the vision, what is possible using uh, bedrock data automation. One of the key things that I miss talking about is every, everything that we extract, whether it's images, whether it's video, whether it's audio, whether it's document, we always provide a confidence score. So we can always bring a human in the loop if you feel that the confidence of extracting these insights doesn't meet your business's quality thresholds, right? You don't want to uh, go, with, uh, go with an asset that has less than 40% confidence score. So we always allow if you choose to bring a human in the loop as a part of your workflow. Anything else to add, John? So awesome. To get started with Bedrock Data Automation is super simple. I'll show you that in the console and then we'll have a bit of fun. I, I wanted just to double click on one thing. Like hybrid search is awesome. Look here we're, we're going to show you how to extract data, but once you have your data being able to do retrieval that has the right level of accuracy, this is a key solution. I see a lot of customers with a lot of success there. Okay, let's get into our console. Yeah. All right, so when you get into AWS, yeah into your AWS console. Uh, if you go into our Oregon region, you'll be able to see our Bedrock Data Automation here on the left side. And just like Arnold was saying, Bedrock Data Automation is really here to help you solve real life problems. You have data, it is in documents, it is completely unstructured, and you wanna be able to put it into a pipeline that will interact with your users, most probably with generative AI. 
because right now everyone wants to interact with natural language. But you want to do the extraction in the easiest way possible. And the best, um, the best example I'm going to give you there is actually getting started with a document where I know what the content should be, but I don't know what the structure of the document is going to be. And one the example I had in mind is I'm going to use my resume. So I have my resume right here. And we're going to run it through what Anna was describing at first, which is the standard output. So here I'm going to generate results there. And you'll see that out of the box, it's going to give me a structured output. But in this case, it's just going to give me format. And by default, it gives me a markdown format of my document. You're going to see it down there. And it's really great. It's a great first point because I can use that formatting for uh, chunking. Uh, how many of you are, are are doing advanced strategies for chunking on your retrieval of multi generation? Yes, two. Awesome. If you have Markdown, you can do hierarchical chunking, which is super useful to get a better level of um, uh, of retrieval. But you can see here that I can do text with Markdown, super easy. I can do CSV tables. So if I already have data that is tabular in my uh, in my source then I'll be able to extract that in a CSV format. Super easy to use. And here it gives me that. So you can see all of the information has been extracted and I can just feed that into a retrieval augmented generation uh, pipeline and a vector store like Milvus and it's gonna work great. However, in use cases like Arnab was describing before, I'm doing a claims uh, uh, management application. I wanna have normalization of the fields. I don't just want to have the raw data extraction. I want to make sure that I have specific fields with specific names that my application can just hone in on and I'll get a better application. So to do that, we've created a custom. I'm struggling a bit with Zoom, but it should be all fine. We're going to create a custom output blueprint. And that's where uh, um, uh, Bedrock Data Automation becomes really interesting. So here, it's going to be resume demo number four because I've run that before. But here you can see that I uploaded my document and I have a natural language field where I'm going to describe the extractions that I want to do. And because I don't want you to see me typing all night and making mistakes, I've prepared that here. So here I'm describing the document. I'm saying, well, this is going to be a resume. It has the name, it has the email address, it has the education from my user, it has languages, it has all of that. I want to describe all of that in a template, in a blueprint, that will then be used to extract regardless of the format of the document. So if you give me a resume and the information is there, then BDA is going to give you the extraction. Go ahead. I was going to say, this is advanced prompting. You don't have to be a prompt engineer to be able to do that. That's another thing that we keep getting feedback is with the proliferation of models and messaging types, et cetera, how can we make it intuitive for business users just to write natural language text and get the same quality of results? Exactly. And what it gives me there, so I've just prompted Bedrock to say, hey, here's what I want to get from my, docu from my document, and it created this JSON. It, it is a JSON. It, it just shows it to me in a nice way, but it's a JSON. And you can see that I have my field. It is now normalized. In my downstream application, I, want, I can use that field strictly. And I have my extraction instructions. It looks very much like prompting, just like Anna was saying. But you don't have to do prompt engineering. We do that for you. And I want to go back to something that Anna was saying before. We will give you a real confidence score. So I don't know how many of you have been doing multi-model uh, understanding with large language models. Okay, by show of hand, get yeah, one, two, oh, more. Have you struggled with probabilities and confidence? Yes, okay, I see everyone. It is a real problem. So we've really mapped up large language models with traditional uh, um, language understanding and traditional ML models to actually give you usable confidence scores. I'm going to generate results there so you can see what it looks like. And you'll see that we we'll also will get tables with the extraction of everything that we requested before. And I want to also, we have, I've asked also for the model to create an inferenced uh, field there. I can ask, 
BDA to say, well, based on all that, I also want to see how many years of experience this person has. And it's going to use the information that it is in the resume to actually infer that information and give that to me as a standard field. So it's super interesting to, to build out. And once I'm done, I can just run that model against many different, if I generate results, oh, it had generated already. So you can see that I worked at Airbus for a long time. And, um, and you can see if we go to the second page that I actually worked at it previous afterwards. It did all of the extraction. I have a super nice usable table and I can use that regardless of the format of the resume itself. So this is how we can use custom, uh, custom output to actually do normalization, targeted extraction without having to go through prompt engineering for each of the fields that we want to abstract. And we also give you a super simple four cent per page pricing for, for, um, for custom extraction. So regardless of the number of, uh, of fields that you have there, regardless of the number of pages you have there, you have a very, very simple um, uh, pricing for, for that feature. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you in terms of blueprints. Uh, the next step is, well, you may be asking, okay, it's great, we can extract data, but what do we do with it afterwards and how do we organize that? Well, you can get it into a retrieval of multi-generation solution and you can use the one that you want, the one that makes sense for your particular use case. And in our use case today, what we like to do is use Milbus. So I have logged off. Once I've logged on, I'll show you exactly how I can do that. Uh, but what I've done is basically I've taken a set of documents that are basically description of talks, like the talk we're doing tonight, and I put it into super simple PDF documents. So imagine that someone just sends, hey, I'm going to talk to your, to your event, and I'm actually going to send you that through snail mail for some reason. It's perfectly fine to have actual data uh, ingestion pipelines, but in this case, that's the demonstration that we're going to, to make. And here, so I'm going to go into Jupyter. I'm going to, to show you what the data looks like. Once I've extracted it, it actually looks like Markdown, which means it's super easy for me to just uh, parse to uh, a, uh, a splitter, run an embedding model, and in my case, I'm using the Titan embeddings model, and then put it into Milvus for, uh, for a query. So I've done that. As you can see, I have my data that is available here. I've split it, I've loaded it, super simple. I use, the, um, I use Bedrock to do my embeddings, and then I just inject it into Milvus, and the, then I can ask specific questions. Did John want to speak at the event? Yes, I can see my speaker application. I can see all of the information. And that was extracted from data I ingested through standard output. Awesome.